everybody knows one of the most popular websites on the internet is called YouTube, the 2005 founded video sharing platform open to uploads from the public. Inevitably issues arose from the use of copyrighted music in these videos, and in order to help mollify the problem, the YouTube audio library was created in 2013 to primarily provide royalty free and copyright permitted music anyone could use when creating videos for the social media site without issue. In November 2022, I downloaded, labeled, and organized the entire library, track by track, and the punchline you chose this video for is 5,761 audio music files of 5,693 different songs. With a gross runtime of 262 hours and 14 seconds, it takes up 35.0 gigabytes at 320 kilobits per second, asterisk, and it took me several hours over multiple days to download. If that concise answer to the title of the film is all you wanted, you're welcome, and thank you for watching. If you're still here at this point, I'm going to presume you noticed several more minutes of the video are left and wonder what else could there be for this guy to talk about for all that time? Or what purpose could this activity possibly serve other than clickbait attention seeking? Well, there will be time for explanations and sentiments later, as I am anxious to get to the tedious task of downloading 5,000 plus songs in an organized way. This audio library also has a generous selection of sound effects and samples, but this exercise is only going to be about the music library part. From its humble beginnings of just a couple hundred songs, it's been added to steadily for the last nine years and has now grown to several thousand. When you first pull up the YouTube audio library, it lists every song in order of the most recently released, but I prefer to keep my list sorted from oldest released for this process. Notice the first ever song presumably added to the library is A Walk Into Space from September 2013, making it sort of the library's Me at the Zoo. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll find options to view 50 or 100 songs per page versus the default of 30. I already said there are 5761 audio tracks in this library, and you'll notice it almost always says some other total number at the bottom if it's trying to display too many pages. How many pages is too many? Usually about 4 or 5. It won't let you scroll through 58 pages of songs even if you wanted to, as the next page button locks up if you try. In this case example, it managed to load 14 pages, but of course we know there's much more music than this. This functionality bug can cause confusion in the larger genres. To find all the songs and get accurate counts of songs on the page, it's necessary to load small filtered categories. From this main interface page, you can sort not only by date added to library, new to old, and old to new, you can sort by artist, title, or duration, but not genre, or mood, or attribution requirements. All the music is classified into one of 15 genres, only 14 of which are visible for reasons which will be insufficiently addressed later. All the songs are also attributed with one of 10 moods, giving us 150 classification types. When you factor in some songs require attribution in the YouTube description, you have to double that again, technically creating 300 classification types possible. Fortunately, not all those classifications are needed, as certain genres and moods just don't mix very well. For example, there's not a lot of angry children's music out there. So here's my little system to use metadata to replicate and possibly improve sortability for my offline library. Starting with a nice empty music folder, I create a few genre folders to start. And the download folder all our files will end up in is also clear and empty to give us a nice way to verify totals as we go. And then just start at the beginning with the first genre, alternative and punk. If we pause here and scroll to the end of the list, we can see some more numeric anomaly where it says 100 out of 116. But if we click to the next page, it now says out of 133. Conveniently here for demonstration is another quirk I've noticed recently with a handful of 2022 editions. Notice we have two duplicates near the end, meaning there are actually only 131 alternative and punk songs. The attribution filters can be used to subdivide larger categories into smaller, more manageable portions when desired or necessary. As a rule, I download the clear music and then the attribution music for each category in release date order, which speeds up labeling later. So we filter the first mood, which is angry. Surely there are some angry alternative and punk songs, and indeed there are 38. I don't see any duplicates, and there are only two Creative Commons tracks, so when I download all the clear ones, I should end up with 36. 
Now we'll just add the attributed songs, but notice when you click to download them, the page jumps back up to the top. That's a pretty annoying quirk with the bigger categories, but again, the attribution filter may help a lot with this. Selecting all 38 files sorted by date created, the order they were added to the library is more or less retained, albeit at least only retained within their subcategories of requiring Creative Commons attribution or not. Notice the files quit coming with completish metadata several years ago, but they did up through April 2016 at least. Opening properties to modify the metadata, I used the comments field to record the mood. Then in the album field, it often says YouTube Audio Library, but not always, so I type in YTAL as an extra way to mark that I modified it. Select Genre, and Save. Then I reopen properties on just the last two Creative Commons attribution files, and modify album to YTAL CC4 as my way to track that obligation. We move the whole batch to our Alternative and Punk folder, and that's about all there is to it. Just rinse and repeat that process another couple hundred times or so. Here's another example. We remove the Mood Angry, select Mood Bright, and the result is 29. Notice the last track is one of those 2022 duplicates that I had to keep watching out for. Two of the remaining 28 unique tracks are Creative Commons attributions, so if we download all these while skipping those for a moment, we should get 26. Occasionally, there may be a message flashed in the bottom middle of the screen that an audio track is not available, but I found as long as there was a flash of web addresses in the lower left-hand corner, the song was successfully downloaded. After adding the CC tracks, take the 28 songs, they are bright, album is YTAL, genre is alternative and punk, OK, grab the last two again, modify album to YTAL CC4, OK, and we're done with that one. So in a way, we've already done 4 out of 300 categories. Only 214 more to go. Within the Alternative and Punk folder itself, we can use our metadata to sort and tabulate how many songs there are by an artist, a mood, creative commons, etc. As you could across the whole library when you're done. So what good is all this meta calibration if you don't use it to make some spreadsheets? Here is a breakdown of all the tracks by volume in their respective genres and moods, as well as their percentage representations of the entire library. Notice the extra little stat in the lower right hand corner about the entire library's attributed tracks. Moving on to a list of genre and mood categories sorted by popularity, and the big winner is Cinematic Dramatic, boasting over 5% or 1 20th of the whole catalog. This chart also breaks down the relevant representations by genre and mood as well. Isn't that fun? Don't you wish you had one of these? Since I went through the painstaking trouble of filling in the artist into the metadata, the next logical step was of course to count up just how many there were. And with a few executive decisions, I came up with 239. There's a number of tracks strangely co-credited and solely credited to apparent record labels, in addition to the odd entry or two subject to error interpretations. Only four artists in the library require attribution whose 986 contributions seem to have all been added in August 2015 or April 2016. I counted 5,693 unique songs total because 68 of the audio tracks in the library called Stings are simply pre-edited snippets of the ending of other full versions of songs in the library. The way I found the eight hidden-ish world songs was from doing this once before in 2018 when I came across one incidentally. Back then you could to click on genre from within the song list and all eight world songs would appear. The drop down menu didn't list a way to get there then either. In this session I noticed they removed the world label from the genre field of those eight tracks and replaced it with the dash, meaning they are still a bit obscure to find and have not been dispersed into other categories. Most, if not all, attribution tracks are Creative Commons 4.0, requiring the inclusion of crediting text in your description box when publishing on YouTube, and the obligation to provide the same credit somehow when posting outside of YouTube. My personal policy is to include credit for any music used in the video in the video itself, regardless of requirements. If you're wondering what is the appeal and benefit of downloading the entire YouTube audio library for offline use, I'll tell you. I try to make my videos 100% from scratch as much as possible, except for the music, the one element that eludes my wheelhouse. For any chance to earn money from the video ads on YouTube and avoid legal arguments in general, the videos cannot have any copyrighted music in them whatsoever. At least that can be detected by sophisticated audio matching software. As uncool as it is to use corporate approved B-tier tunes, I'm quite grateful to have this resource and commend YouTube's effort and dedication to the project. 
The music quality, variety, and quantity really has improved since I first explored it in 2017 when it had less than 2,000 songs. While I found other outside music that seems so far safe to use, my experience has been that the music from YouTube is the safest bet of convenience, and you can always modify and tailor it creatively to suit your video, essentially making it unique from others. Confidentially, my computer of archiving and editing is offline, and having a complete working copy of the entire catalog for it is helpful in multiple ways. I'm not going to use every track, obviously, but it's nice to have them sort of pre-built into the workstation. Some things I experienced from downloading every song in the YouTube audio library include not only a gain of respect for it, but I got a better sense of what potential it can offer to all skill levels and how rounded the overall offerings are, as well as direct observation of the quirks and features of the interface. My complaints are generally the limited and sometimes erroneous functionality in indexing and playback, and the distinct and appalling lack of classic classical music. And finally, the elephant in the room is that this task never stays complete completed for long, as they ever expand the coffers routinely, but I'm hoping to keep it maintained now that I have achieved a complete starting base from the beginning to the most current entries for a hot minute in November 2022. Case in point, while finalizing this very video, they added five new tracks by Otis McDonald in the R&B and soul genre, with the mood classification of funky, and so virtually every number and statistic provided in this video is changed, and therefore now erroneous. About here is where the video was originally going to end, but now I'm obligated to let you know that it gets even worse. From looking through my old offline library, I estimate at this time there could be up to 200 tracks or more, which is a worthless figure if you notice, that I had previously downloaded from this YouTube audio library that are not currently listed. Perhaps I have bad timing on this and they are rebuilding the link system as I speak, but a couple of songs I've used are not downloadable at the moment. Some of these missing tracks are by Kevin McLeod, Jingle Punks, Silent Partner, and others, both attributed and unattributed. From what I understand, once you enter a song into Creative Commons, it can't be revoked or copyright claimed by anyone in perpetuity so I think we're all safe there. I didn't set out to harp on all the issues and inconsistencies of their system. It just all kind of added up to the level of glaringly obvious and present in this trivial venture. My guess is YouTube will end up overhauling the entire audio library before working out all the bugs in this one. And for once, I'm looking forward to something like that in this case. It certainly could use some enhancement. To their credit, sometime after mid-2020, they did update and standardize all the file names. Before I go, it's important to point out this is a very atypical video for me, and even if you liked it, it would be prudent to have a gander around the rest of my portfolio prior to any rash or impulsive behaviors, such as subscribing to the Dozen Speed YouTube channel. But again, thank you for watching.